Hey, welcome back, Dr. Angela. Hi, I'm Dr. Patty. We're gonna talk about insulin and insulin resistance in this video. A lot of you guys have been asking and it's a great topic to clear up because it's a really common thing mm -hmm. with our Western diets. Yeah, you might have heard the term a lot, mm -hmm. but not know exactly what it is or what happens in the body. Exactly, so we're clearing it up. So insulin is a hormone that our pancreas makes that helps us get sugar inside the cells so we can use it for energy. But sometimes we have this increased need, maybe we've been eating a lot of carbs, we'll get into all of that, mm -hmm. but um, our cells stop responding. The little receptor on the outside of the cell stops responding to that insulin and then we get insulin resistance. So I often explain it like this, like I think of like your roommate or your partner or your wife or your girlfriend, your husband, like tells you to like, hey, can you please do the dishes? And so when they first say it, you're like, okay, you do the dishes. But they just keep <laughs> nagging you all the time, like every day, can you do the dishes? Can you do the dishes? Can you put your stuff away? After a while, like you actually start not hearing them. And then they have to say Selective it. Selective hearing. <laughs> yeah, then they have to say it even louder. Hey, yes. can you do the dishes? And so that's kind of how I think of insulin resistance. Like in the beginning, your insulin, your body has, your blood has a lot of sugar. So in a very normal response, insulin is produced, sends all that sugar into the cells because it's dangerous for our bodies to have elevated sugar in our bloodstream. And not in the cells. We want it in the cells for energy use. Mm -hmm. And um, so insulin is produced, gets that sugar into the cells. But if we keep doing things that, and we'll get into those risk factors, you know, ob the obvious is eating too much sugar or mm -hmm. too many refined carbohydrates that keeps putting so much sugar into our bloodstream that insulin keeps having to be pumped out. So the pancreas has to do all this work mm -hmm. over and over again. The cell basically stops listening because they're like, oh God, here's insulin again, yelling at me to put the, put the dishes away, to put the sugar into the cells, and it stops listening and becomes resistant. So then your body has to make more more insulin, yell louder, in order for those cells to listen. Mm -hmm. And insulin is a really important hormone. Like I said, it's you know we, it's dangerous to have high, high levels of sugar in our bloodstream, mm -hmm. but insulin also helps our um, cells be full and be nourished. It is a factor in ovulation. It, sig it signals to our ovaries to actually be able to ovulate mm -hmm. when we've got um, good sugar and good nourishment in our cells. So insulin, like cortisol, I was telling Telling Dr. Angela that you know these hormones get a bad rap or like oh cholesterol high cholesterol or high stress hormone we need all these hormones yeah it's they, hormones out of balance that are the problem everything mm -hmm. out of balance you it's know true. so insulin is very very important but if produced in excess then it can start to create symptoms weight gain being one you know that a lot of people think about or difficulty losing weight yeah. so um, we insulin is great but we just don't want to produce too much of it so talking about like why we're gonna be producing too much of it. So again, back to diet as a primary issue, you know, for having a lot of refined sugars and refined mm -hmm. carbs, we start to have this problem happen. We can definitely have genetic issues. I mean, some mm -hmm. of us have an amazing diet and still are just a little bit more prone. Mm -hmm. There can be other things like sometimes like hormonal shifts and like menopause or different things like sure. that can set us up. I mean, I will admit that I have some insulin resistance and you can test for insulin in your um, blood work, but it's also something that you can um, discuss with your doctor and I know with, I've actually haven't measured my insulin, but I have symptoms of insulin resistance. And I know for a fact that I have a long history of sugar addiction. And, you know, for probably a good decade or more, I was having a very sugary coffee beverage in the morning on an empty stomach. I would go to my local Starbucks. Um, I mean, even in high school, I remember working at the mall and for lunch, I would get a coffee bean ice blended mocha as my lunch and on an empty stomach. And so it would just be like this huge rush of sugar into my bloodstream and then insulin being produced. And once, once twice, it's not a big deal. Our bodies can handle these things. Yeah. But I was doing this for many, many years and it's taken a toll. And so for me, I have to be a lot more careful with my nutrition now because of um, what has happened to my hormonal system from years of sugar. So that, you know, 
diet, sugar, mm -hmm. refined carbohydrates, a long history of these things, coupled with the sort of perfect storm of what are your genetics and your environmental factors, yeah. those all will play together to, for some people, create insulin resistance. And it is, you know, genetics, like Dr. Angela was saying, some people can, you know, be really strict with their stress mm -hmm. and their nutrition, but if their genetics, you know, predispose them, they have to be a little bit more mindful. But earlier she was saying, yeah, then there's people who just eat cake all the time oh. and have no <laughs> hormonal problems. They were just born with another set of genes, you know, but they probably have other issues right. that um, they we have, have to deal with. what we need to deal yeah. with. So on the why do we get it list, and then we'll go into maybe some signs and mm -hmm. symptoms. Okay, so um, also, you know, not sleeping, really interesting. I would not think of that as an obvious one, but not getting enough sleep is um, something that puts you at risk for insulin resistance. Because I think it's because it affects our hormones so greatly. Yeah. Everything from our circadian rhythm all the way down to our sex hormones. We, we uh, so many of us don't get enough sleep and don't even think about that as one of the main causes and treatments for so many things. Definitely. And stress, which causes everything, but it's actually on the list for mm -hmm. insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. um, so those are reasons why. Anything else you can think of in terms of our list of why we're prone to insulin resistance? Well, um, you mean like risk factors mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. causes? Yep. Um, even just other lifestyle things like not getting enough regular movement. Yes, exercise. You know, yes, not definitely. exercising, a history of being a smoker or being exposed to That's an interesting a lot too, of environmental toxins. toxins. Um, because when our body has to detox, you know, that creates a whole domino effect of the liver and the hormones, yeah. creates more stress hormone because the body perceives that as stress. So mm -hmm. it creates a whole cascade of events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are some of the main Reasons. risk factors, mm -hmm. causes. You know, we mentioned sleep. Sleep is sort of a risk factor and a cause as well as something that you can work on to treat. treat. Um, and so is belly fat. So yeah, you may have increased belly fat from hormonal issues um, or your diet. And as your belly fat increases, because that's a different kind of fat, mm -hmm. um, it can produce more inflammatory hormones mm -hmm. and then cr also create more insulin resistance. Yep, but, but it's also a sign, like yes. if you're getting insulin resistant, weight gain is one of the first things you're gonna see around the waist. Mm -hmm. So both yeah, ways. definitely. So what can you do if you've got signs of insulin resistance. So backing up though, oh, should yeah. we just talk about like what else you might see if you have insulin resistance? Some other ways you might know. That sure. You're okay. So blood pressure. So elevated blood pressure happening, elevated blood sugar happening. So definitely like if you go in for your annual physical and the doctor's like, oh, your blood pressure's up and your blood sugar's up and maybe on your cholesterol panel, your triglycerides mm -hmm. are. And this is, I, can I just interrupt and say yeah. like, we put so much focus on LDL, HDL, total cholesterol. I think that triglycerides really Absolutely. are something that we need to be looking at more carefully. It's another type of fat in our bloodstream. And to be honest, like I really don't put a lot of stock into total cholesterol when I'm yep. looking at patients' blood work. Yeah, because if you have great HDLs, you know. But I will look at triglycerides. Mm -hmm. I will look at, I will actually measure insulin in some mm -hmm. um, blood sugar. So triglycerides, make sure you are looking at that on your blood work. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so those are some of the ways we're gonna know um, in the short term. Longer term, like if this has gone on for years and years, um, if you have elevated blood sugar for too many years, you can start to get things like nerve damage. So some people can get things like neuropathies, like mm -hmm. pain in their lower extremities or not being able to feel things as well, some kind of numbness happening. Or vision mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. eyes. And the reason why that is, is the sugar molecule is quite large. And when you think about like all the little calories Capillaries, like the little blood vessels at the tips of your fingers, the tips of your um, toes, your feet, in your eyes, those little vessels. Sometimes by the time it gets to the very tippy end, it's like, I say it's like one of those one-way streets like here in the hills of LA where like literally <laughs> there's only one like space for only one row of cars to go. And so that's how it is with our blood vessels. So it's literally just enough space for like a row of red blood cells to make their way through, carrying oxygen and carrying the nutrients that we need. Attached too much sugar to those molecules, it's just like a big traffic jam. They are not gonna get to the ends of your vessels in your eyes, in your hands, in your toes. And this is why if you've got long-term high sugar in your blood or you've now even developed 
into type 2 diabetes, then you're going to eventually have nerve issues. Tissue and, damage start yeah, to happen. Because the blood supply just can't get there. Um, but this is long term. So that's yeah. why prevention and working on things before they get to be too big of an issue yeah. is so important. And we, you know, the reason why we do these videos and why we're so passionate about naturopathic medicine is that we do live in somewhat of a medical model. And this is not to judge conventional medicine because all systems of medicine are necessary and Absolutely. work together. But we do live in a little bit of a model where it's like, let's wait and see. Let's wait for a disease to form and <laughs> then like, we'll treat it. What are we waiting it. for? <laughs> yeah, let's treat it now, yes. you know, before it gets to be a problem. Yeah, and so we can both prevent and we can reverse mm -hmm. insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. That's the really good news. Yeah. So what are some of the things we're gonna do to work on reversing this process now? Well, number one is nutrition. Yeah, diet. that's oh, sorry, guys. I would start there, <laughs> um, and you know, it can be. It's really a spectrum. Everyone's going to ask, okay, what's the what's the diet that we um, use or eat mm -hmm. in order to heal insulin resistance? Yep. Well. The answer is not so you know easy. It depends on the individual because yeah. it's a spectrum. Yeah. So some people can just you know cut out processed sugars. Yes. Um, or maybe refined carbohydrates. You know, kind of those like cookies and crackers and things Pasta, like that. And cereal. they do great. Mm -hmm. You know, some people their insulin resistance has gone so deep that maybe you need to go a little bit deeper. Maybe at this point you need to temporarily or for a little bit longer cut out grains. Yeah. Some people. People may need to do a little bit more of a paleo or even cutting out fruit temporarily. Or eating um, low sugar fruits and more like mm -hmm. the berries. Um, but even that, you know, like one, somebody who has diabetes, mm -hmm. somebody could have a cup of low glycemic, high antioxidant blueberries, blood sugar's fine. Another person with diabetes so could true. look at a blueberry and their blood sugar shoots up. So really the short answer I would say yeah. is lowering or cutting out sugars. Yeah. That can mean everything from white sugar all the way to even healthy legumes and grains temporarily, depending on where your hormonal picture is and how much healing needs to happen. It's kind of like, you know, if you've got 10 pounds to lose versus 100 pounds, you may need to go a little bit deeper and for a little bit longer. So this is where you can kind of adjust and play, yep. see how your body responds. This is your opportunity to develop a relationship with yourself and see how food, how your relationship with food is, um, what heals you, and then maybe even working with your naturopathic doctor to then customize a little bit more. But bottom line is lower sugar, whatever yeah. that means for you. And you can get a little glucometer that you can have at home that you can kind of test things in the short run to figure out, okay, if I eat this, what happens? Mm. Half an hour later, the next morning, you can also, when you go in, you know, every three months, get your hemoglobin A1C or your insulin checked, you know, that's the longer term. But so testing to help you figure this out. So diet it is key mm -hmm. then we're also you know gonna visit things like exercise that really do help with the insulin sensitivity getting that insulin back into the cells mm -hmm. the receptors I mean exercise works so well it that does. people who are full-blown diabetics really have to measure their blood sugar because if they exercise and they're on insulin or metformin or some sort of medication your body actually will drop enough blood sugar that if you're on a medication it could drop it too much so yeah. that's how powerful yes. exercise is um, also we're gonna say it probably in every single video but stress management yeah. Yeah. Um, and on a daily basis not just going on a vacation once a year but um, you know when we are under stress our body puts more sugar into our bloodstream mm -hmm. as a safety mechanism so we can run out of there Mobilize. so we can get the heck out of there so <laughs> too bad we, we can't run away from it all you I know. know i know you got you got to go through it you got to you got to feel it to heal it <laughs> but in all honesty like if you work on your stress um, that has a huge effect on blood sugar and in the inverse you could be eating just broccoli and fish or just a fully healthy plant-based diet and your stress is high it's true. your blood sugar can go up and create more insulin resistance over time so definitely stress management yeah so whether it's mindfulness practices or maybe it's even exercise practices that you find really fun mm -hmm. and that would help you know with both mm -hmm. things or yeah. singing yes. or dancing or coloring or you know think of uh, things that 
are stress releasers for you. Even, you know, in a pinch, like watching a funny movie. Yeah. But I do think consistency. We talk consistency. about stress management a lot, and we think about these big things, like an hour-long yoga class. Or, But I think doing small things every day is really Five-minute meditation, 10-minute meditations, mm -hmm. little journaling. Definitely. And then... Um, Ready to move on to some herbs and nutrients? Yes, yeah, so I was just gonna say sleep, but no. oh yes, yeah. so definitely. Well, you know, sleep can is a risk factor and yeah. also a treatment. Yep. Um, and then moving on to some herbs and nutrients that yep. can help. What's your favorite? Berberine. I think berberine. I'm gonna steal it. I know we all love berberine. Berberine is so effective across mm -hmm. the board for blood sugar regulation, for the lipid picture. Again, so love berberine. So we'll list these below and. Um, there's a couple uh, formulas that I know I use in my practice that I really enjoy. So um, make sure to check the description box because we'll make sure to list that. And then you can um, get 10% off of our dispensary. Don't ever forget, that's just constant yep. in all of our videos. So um, look uh, down below for more information. But berberine is great. I use it all the time in my practice too. One you may have heard of is chromium. Mm -hmm. um, that really helps to reduce that blood sugar. And um, you can take it in a little bit higher doses, but work with your naturopathic doctor. It's great too, because it really helps with the cravings, you know, because it's hard, sometimes mm -hmm. you're really craving sugar, and so that yeah. can help you not crave so much sugar. Definitely. Um, speaking of that, Gymnema mm -hmm. is a great herb to help with sugar cravings. And so much so that they've done studies where if you take Gymnema and then eat sugar, it doesn't taste as good. It's great. <laughs> yeah, so it really affects affects and desensitizes your need and desire and taste for sugar. So yep. Gymnema is a really interesting and wonderful herb. Yep. Alpha lipoic acid is another great nutrient as well, powerful antioxidant mm -hmm. that really helps also with this blood sugar regulation piece and insulin receptor sensitivity. So I like yeah. that Yeah. And then something easy that you can do by adding it into your food, into your morning tonics. Um, when I do, sometimes I'll do um, like a adaptogenic latte kind of situation in the morning and I add Ceylon cinnamon. So cinnamon is really good at lowering blood uh, blood sugar, almost said blood pressure, and it tastes good. It tastes kind of sweet, a little bit yeah. spicy, um, so it adds a really nice flavor. So instead of having to take another pill, you can actually add cinnamon into um, your beverages or your smoothies, um, things like that. I'm holding back the giggle because I'm having the visual of like from Starbucks to cinnamon. We've come a long way. <laughs> good job. I had a long way to go still, but uh, you know those ice blended mochas from. Yeah, I was, I was the slurpee 18. queen. Slurpees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you know better, you do you better, do and you better. just we just keep making progress. That's the whole point of our journeys, this channel, all of it. We're so. doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then lastly, I mean, um, just to make a little note is that, you know, liver support. It's yes. not a direct, um, you know, you take this and your blood sugar goes down, but the liver has a huge relationship to our blood sugar. Our liver stores glycogen and sugar. Um, our liver makes and metabolizes hormones. Uh, so supporting the liver is gonna be very helpful, whether that's through castor oil packs. Mm -hmm. You can check out uh, my previous video that I did on how to do a castor oil pack, or through herbs like mi milk thistle. Yep. Um, I think we've even done a maybe a video on liver support. Yeah, I did a fatty liver one as well, which is mm -hmm. a lot of things that are gonna help with blood sugar regulation and liver health. And we'll link those below in the description box and in the cards as well. So um, these are some really good starting places, but I do wanna emphasize that I think when it comes to insulin resistance, nutrition and stress management and proper sleep, that alone is gonna make huge. a huge difference. Um, so maybe focus there first, and then you can kind of move into um, other treatments as well. And for those of you who have success stories, who have dealt with this and have you know, come out the other end, share your story, share with the community what you did, which things were most effective for you guys. Um, anyone who has questions, of course, chime in. Yeah. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you so much as usual for watching. We're really enjoying making these for you. We're so grateful for the community and the conversations that we're having. And thank you so much. And share if you think anyone you know would find this helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Um, and we will see you back here very soon. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much, everyone.